3 for 3 is produced by Impact Networking, hosted at the state-of-the-art Unified Support Operations Center in Lake Forest, Illinois. To find out more about the company, schedule a tour of our facilities, or speak to a representative, visit us on the web at impactmybiz.com. Hello, everybody. I'm Dick Stockton, and welcome to 3 for 3, an inside look into the careers of icons from many walks of life who have made history, they've broken down barriers, and they continue to bring change in their community. I'm joined today by Bill Jacobs, Impact Networking's Chief Diversity Officer, and our very special guest, Tony Stubblefield, who is the new head basketball coach at DePaul and uh, has quite a task in front of him but has the great backing of uh, Dwayne Peavy, the athletic director, who went far and wide looking for the right guy for this job. And Tony, you're here. And, uh, you know, we could talk about 20 years of coaching and the last 11 at the University of Oregon and throughout we'll sprinkle some of the things that you've done. But you're 51 years old. And I want to ask you about the patience you have had to have to finally become a head coach. Well, I'll tell you what, Dick, um, I'm happy to be here. I'm excited. Um, obviously, I did have to be patient. You know, it took me 28 years as an assistant coach. And I was really, you know, just waiting for the right opportunity, the right situations. There were some situations that had come along during my path as an assistant coach. I just didn't think it was the right fit or the perfect fit for me. Um, so, again, I just had to stay patient and um, hopefully prepare for that right opportunity. And I feel like that came along with the Paul. Tell me about patience. Uh, we know that there are workers out there who have jobs, you know, many of jobs at Impact who would like to get to this point and it hasn't happened for them yet and they wonder whether it will ever happen. Has that been a situation where did you ever at any point say, you know what, I wonder if I will ever become a head coach? Well, you know, I don't think it ever got to that point for me. You know, I've been blessed and fortunate where I've been at some very good institutions, um, building that program back up at Cincinnati and work, working for a great head coach and Mick Cronin and being a part of that success. And then being at Oregon for the last 11 years with Dana Altman and building that program back up and um, building it up to the top that I was very happy and content with where I was at. And I knew the opportunity would come along eventually. I was very hopeful that that opportunity would come along, and I'm thankful that it did here this April, this past so, April. So it, it appears to me that the key for people who are anxious to get to the golden ring is to continue to do your job as best as possible. Don't anticipate, don't look ahead too much, and just tackle what you have in front of you. I definitely would recommend that. And again, everybody's path is different. And then I came from a great situation again at Oregon, and I knew eventually it would happen. I just wanted to be the best fit for me and whatever institution that I chose to be a part of. Now, you were at the University of Cincinnati, and a long time ago, you're well aware, I mean, of, of the greatness of the basketball school, you know, that, that Big Cronin handled. But, you know, Oscar Robertson, exactly. as you know, was one of the, the great players, and I think people today may not remember, youngsters may not remember who Oscar Robertson was, but and that was my time growing up, and he was one of the greatest players who ever lived at that time, and we've gone on to people get bigger and faster and so forth. And of course, the two straight national championships yeah. that were won by Cincinnati, that had to have an effect on you a little bit then. It did, and obviously, you know, taking over for Bob Huggins, who had really built that Cincinnati program, um, was a major task. It was a little you know, turnover there when he left the program. So going there with Mick Cronin, who was originally from Cincinnati, um, had been an assistant coach for Bob Huggins. Um, he kind of helped make the transition a little smoother, but we did have some work to do. They were transitioning from going from Conference USA to the original Big East back then. So um, definitely was appreciative of that opportunity at Cincinnati. How was Oregon different from Cincinnati? Well, it's just from a standpoint of obviously being in the Pacific Northwest, um, different in league situations of going from the Big East to going from the Pac-12. So it was different from even a recruiting standpoint of Oregon um, at that point is more of a national recruiting brand because um, there just wasn't as many good players in our backyard at the time when we had got the Oregon job. And Cincinnati had more of a recruiting base being right there 
in um, the Midwest and being able to recruit the Big East. Right. And they had some build-up tradition of what Bob Huggins had built. During the time uh, you were there, four recruiting classes rated in the top 12 nationally, which is an testament to what you did. Um, many coaches say, I don't, the recruiting is the toughest thing for me to do. Um, I want to coach basketball. But you, you relish recruiting, didn't you? I really enjoyed it because I like meeting people and I like building relationships. So that was very, very important to me. And um, that's something I was very sincere about, just meeting different families in different situations. And whether we got to play or not, even you know, staying a part of them people's lives and just building relationships from down the road. So just meeting different type of people and that's something that was very important to me and that's something I really enjoy doing. Is it strictly a selling position or more than that? I think it's much more to it than selling. Obviously, you are selling your institution and what you have to offer and why you think your institution is the best fit for that young man. But it's about the relationship and then life after basketball as well because, again, you know, I tell them a lot of times this is a four-year commitment or two-year commitment from a university standpoint, but it's a lifelong relationship with me that I'm going to check for, you know, on you when you're – done here at college, whether you're going to be a professional or going to the workforce or wherever it may be. So it's a lifelong relationship that's important to me. So let's go back to your early days. You, you played at, at Colorado, right? You yes. were, you were high, well, school, high school. Yes. High school star at Colorado. And uh, what turned you and was there somebody that was an influence in turning you to the passion of wanting to be a coach? Well, you know, I, I finished my high school career in Colorado. I went to the University of Nebraska, Omaha. And, you know, my junior and senior year, to make a little extra money, I just worked camps the whole summer. So I would start working camps in June and within the last, you know, week in August. So I would just go from one campus to another working camps, and I really enjoyed doing it. And later on in my basketball career, my senior year, I was having some knee injuries and so forth. And I just, you know, had to really figure out what I wanted to do is coaching was something that I was really attracted to, you know, hosting young men when they would come in on campus visits is something like that I really enjoy getting to know them, getting to know their families. So there was something I really wanted to pursue when I got done with college and I had the opportunity to stay on as like a student assistant, graduate assistant at Nebraska Omaha. And that's what really jump-started my coaching career. Who were the people that influenced you the most? You know, I tell you what, I've been influenced by some very influential people that have been a part of my career from, you know, working for the great Lou Henson at New Mexico State University, um, obviously working for Mick Cronin at Cincinnati, working for Dana Altman at Oregon, um, being able to build a great relationship with Phil Knight over the course of the last 11 years being at Oregon, um, Pat Kilkenny, who was the athletic director that hired us at Oregon, um, George Raveling, you know, growing up in Iowa, you know, Coach Rav coached at the University of Iowa, then went on to work at Nike. So just, you know, being a, as a mentor to me, somebody that I could bounce things off of, and I'm probably leaving some guys off the list that have, have played a good, great role and great influence in my career. George Raveling was an influence, a great one with me as well, because okay. I knew George uh, back in, when I worked in Pittsburgh, gotcha. and he taught me a lot about the sport of college basketball at that particular time as a reporter, you know, doing that. Um, where were the pitfalls uh, other than the fact that you had to wait for the opportunity that, that you had to handle, uh, you know, any problems along the, you know, and they're always going to be the adversities that people face. Mm -hmm. How did you deal with it uh, and what were they? Well, you know, you know, obviously there's some pitfalls and, you know, starting programs is hard, you know, to get them off the ground and running and you're going to, you know, lose some recruiting battles along the way and you're going to take some lumps. You know, we took some lumps at Cincinnati going into the Big East at that time because, you know, the Big East was a great league. You know, Jim Calhoun was, had great teams. Georgetown had great teams at those times. So just, you know, starting the program and getting the program off the ground and running, I would say, are some of the pitfalls that you face. But just having the passion and desire that, you know, though that there's light at the end of the tunnel, tunnel was something that I was really focused on. And just know that if I keep working hard, that there's going to be some positives that came out of it. So, you know, no, I wouldn't say no major, major pitfalls, but just getting the program off the ground and running and just having to work tirelessly to make those things happen. 
And now you have a new challenge. Yeah, I do. And, and, and again, you know, I think being a part of two situations like this in the past from Cincinnati, from Oregon, have helped prepare me for this situation. So, in what way? Well, you know, it, it starts with recruiting. You have to have the talent that can help you be successful. But at the same time, you have to have the right guys. You have to have the right character guys that buy into your value and how you're trying to build a program. So, you know, I've learned from some great coaches along the way that helped prepare me for this situation. It's just about putting it all together in my roadmap that I have mm -hmm. for this vision and this program. Mm -hmm. Bill, it's all about diversity, it looks like, in this role. Yes, it's all about diversity and it's all about technology and it's all about sports and it's all about uh, just heading, you know, doing things in the right direction. Yes. Now, we have a new uh, arena, Wind Trust Arena. Yes here in Chicago that, uh, that DePaul is going to be playing at, correct? Yes, sir. So how, what's the seating capacity of that arena? Around 10,300. 10,300. <laughs> so you're going to have 10,300 cheering fans rooting for you every day. How does that make you feel? It makes me feel great. I want 10,300 loud screaming fans. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, it gets me just excited to know that the potential with this job and again growing up in Iowa I've seen the success of DePaul you know I remember watching DePaul on WGN Channel 9 mm -hmm. and those great teams so um, it's, it's not like I'm coming to rewrite the will at DePaul it, it's happened before in the past and mm -hmm. I know it can happen again yeah one time DePaul was our number one attraction here in Chicago I mean more so than any other sports team and it was a, a great team, and we are so blessed and so happy to have you leading as our new head coach at DePaul University. Well, I tell you what, I'm very excited to be here. I know it's a great opportunity. Um, I'm going to work tirelessly to turn this program around, I can tell you that. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I know when, uh, when Phil Knight comes in to visit you <laughs> at the Wind Trust Arena, I'm pretty sure that you guys will stop by this lovely facility and we can have a little lunch. Well, we definitely will because he's promised to come play. He's come, promised to come watch a game and Oregon has promised to come play a game. Excellent. So we got two Great. things going in our favor here. Excellent, excellent, <laughs> excellent. And, and uh, as we ne near the end, and, and Bill, I know you, I know you want to ask um, Coach Doublefield another question, but uh, the, the coaching style that you're going to bring to the Blue Demons. Well, you know, I, I want to bring a fun, attractive style of basketball. Um, I think it's very easy, or not very easy, but I think it's easier to recruit to. So I really want to get up and down the floor, play a lot in transition. But I want to be a team that's known to play very hard, that's going to lay it all on the line night in and night out. And, you know, for opponents to say, that's a team we don't want to play again. So from mm -hmm. an offensive standpoint, I really want to push the ball and transition, try to get out and score some easy baskets. And defensively, I'm a big guy on a man-to-man -man defense of really getting after it man-to-man, -man, being able to call, create some points off of our defenses, um, mixing in some presses back to some zones. So just changing it up a little bit. But, you know, really known as a team that defensively is going to get after it night in and night out, rebound the basketball. And that's something that, you know, Coach Altman was very big on at Oregon is, you know, you can't control – whether you're going to make shots night in and night out, you know, over the course of a 30-game mm -hmm. season, you know, 10 games you're going to shoot it really, really well, 10 games you're going to shoot it average, and 10 games you're going to shoot it bad. And how are we going to win them games when we shoot the ball bad, or how are we going to win them mm -hmm. games? Defense the is the big constant. A, a defense and rebounding is going, is going to translate, right. and that will travel. Sounds good. You want the kids to come here to have fun, yeah. but they got to work hard. Yes, sir. Right? That's it. Tony, how does technology play a role in coaching in basketball? I tell you what, it, it plays a much bigger role today in coaching basketball than what it did 28 years ago. And that's mm -hmm. just kind of how things have evolved with young men. Um, the young men were recruiting, um, social media, different things of that nature, um, young men trying to build their brand. So that all definitely plays a part in even the recruiting the analytics of evaluating the young men of, you know, the type of players you think they're going to be or even with the transfer portal being what it is and um, the success they may have had or may not have had at one institution and how that may translate mm -hmm. to your institution. So it, it, it plays a much bigger role today than what it did when I got into this business 28 years ago. Gotcha. And again, it's still evolving. 
Because mm-hmm. yeah. technology is evolving every day. Yeah. Exactly. Wow. So do you have um, a way to keep up with that? We do. Uh, we do. And I think that's, you, you know, you, you hire some guys that really can keep up with it as well. that can help you along the way mm-hmm. um, with that because it, it, that's a big part of it. I really mm-hmm. do. Mm. I really do. Well, I got, you know, they used to look at film. You know, they used to put the film on the projector <laughs> and how they went to videotape. And now you could see matchups with individual players that you're going to have for a game. So they have really the technology aspect uh, that Bill brought in here is such a valuable thing. I know it, it, that. It so. is. And just like synergy and pulling up film on a young man or a team, it's just much more accessible mm-hmm. right now where we can be at our laptop, we can be on our computer or your iPad, and you, you have everything right at your disposal that you need. So that's very important. Thanks for being with us. And Tony Stubblefield, who certainly has paid his dues uh, in the world of college basketball and now the head coach of DePaul, trying to bring them back to where they deserve to be in this uh, great city of Chicago, and uh, good luck to you. Thanks for being with us. Well, thank you guys so much for having me. I really appreciate thank, thank being you. here. Thank Tony you Tony Stubblefield, much. our guest today on 3 for 3.